Welcome to At the Top. I'm Barry Louise Switson, your moderator for this segment. This program is to bring you the best of what's happening in Manhattan Neighborhood Network here in New York City. We're going to start our program with a little bit of spiritual inspiration from Audrey. Hi, everybody. My name is Audrey. My show, I'm the producer and on-air host and sometime guest of Aurora Borealis, which is on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. on Channel 16 Live. And my show is about growth, development, and transformation. It's a show on evolutionary approaches to living. I'm personally a psychic as well as a healer. We usually have guests and Everything we do in whatever way, shape, form we can do is to help spur human evolution internally and externally. As I say it on the show, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically through time, place, and space. We always have great music um, from various different kinds of traditions. I love music. I love rhythm, so it's part of the show. And there's always been a segment of our teenage representative. Next, we get a summation of what's happening in the entertainment world here in Manhattan with Ross Byron and Brian's Red Roller. Sexy Joey B. We'll see you next time on TV, on your TV. Oh, Ross, well, let's do it. Oh, let's do another TV show. Computers are here to stay, and we have a computer expert, really, with her show, Computer Links. things we try and do, do in this program is to show you 
other things that you can do with your computer outside of what perhaps you do regularly, like word processing or data processing. We're trying to show you things that might be fun to do and might make your life more interesting. With me today is Denton Harewood. Hi, Denton. How you doing, my bullet? Denton is a, a produces a jazz program called Jazz Bites. He also uses a lot of different software packages on his computer, and this works both for Mac and PC. What's the package you're going to show us today, Denton? Well, it's called PG Music's Band in a Box. And what is Band in a Box? Well, it was designed for musicians, or just people who just like music. This is a bossa nova. Okay. And the same song. Yeah. And let's see if that... Doesn't sound very much different. The beat is different. Yeah. Try well, jazz. let's try let's try another one. Here. Okay. Let's stop this. Let's go to it. This is a jazz swing. At least it's supposed to be. Yeah. This is swing. It's different. Yeah. Danceable. Mm -hmm. Can we? We have another computer linked lifestyle show today. And we're going to present a very interesting webmaster, art director, designer, and developer, and producer. Her name is Linda Engstrom. Hi, Linda. Hi. It's nice Welcome to, to the see show. you. We've made the, mag the online magazine look very New York. And the theme is graffiti and subways. And when it got very hot during the summer, I put in that subway fire, yeah. if you <laughs> notice, <laughs> my little editorial comments. Yeah. And um, I've grouped the journal online into features, columns, and reviews. We have another program that deals with music. It's called The Art of Jazz. And it's a wonderful show where we have a lot of guest celebrities appear, and I've met quite a few of them, and it's pretty fascinating. But it don't take a lot of money to put the smile on my face. Really? You know what I mean? But you got to grind her coffee at a slow and easy. This is the art of jazz, so I'd like to get you artists to talk about what it is that you do. So let's start out by talking about the voice as an instrument. Several mm. people do not really understand that it is an instrument. It is. And I'd like to ask you, what is it uh, about jazz singing? What, what do you have to do as a singer to use your instrument? First of all, you have to align yourself with the instrumentalists. Instead of being the front man as they do in pop or rock, cabaret, jazz is the one art form that the vocalist has to become part of the band structure first before he can step out and find his own voice because it is structured for the instrumentalist and the vocalist must understand that there's times in the program that he has to find his own voice with them he's become almost a musical piece with them you tend to stand out because I, I hear different things coming out um, it's not just the same I guess you know um, I don't know how to demonstrate because mm. I'm just learning to hear the drums as well. Well, there's a, the drum set is it's an, a unique instrument in the sense that here you have several components. Now today, I have in front of me just a snare drum, but uh, it can be composed of anywhere from a, a, a couple of drums and a couple of cymbals to, you know, a monstrous setup. And there's uh, probably infinite well, not infinite, but just an incredible variety of sounds which are possible to get on the drums. I mean, even on one drum, I can get a, a wide variety of sounds. For example, even with my hands. Uh, I've noticed that people are kind of doing mm -hmm. things with their hands. I mean, the sound palette is, is just very wide, and, it's, and I guess the point I'm getting at is not utilized very much. I mean. one sound, I have the snares off. 
Now the snares are on. We got another sound. You know, so imagine with uh, five drums of different sizes, and then you have different, these are brushes, you have sticks, you have mallets. I mean, there's no reason for, a, uh, in my opinion, for it to always sound the same and always hear the same sounds in the same place. Wolfgang Busch does a variety show for his New York New Rock program that I think you'll find fascinating. On the serious side of life, we have Mark Unger, who started an organization called ADD, better known as Attention Deficit Disorder, because he is affi afflicted with this particular ailment. Here his program is the round table, and what we've done is taped him while he was explaining to an audience about how Manhattan Neighborhood Network works, and we'd like to share it with you introduce you to something that's very interesting that I don't know if you've experienced this before. This is called Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's community access television and theoretically this place is really available to almost anybody. It's community television. This is uh, non-commercial. So people who live in Manhattan actually have access to this kind of programming whether you want to uh, do programming yourself in these studios you can be trained, and it doesn't cost you any money. It is provided by the City of New York and Time Warner Cable. 
Um, and also, if you want to put on your own programs, that you may want to collaborate with others and put them on the air in Bronx, in Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens. And you also have your own community access uh, stations and studios in your own areas. So if you call up a Bronx Net, also in Queens, there's another uh, community access. So there are many around there. And I just wanted to uh, you get an idea here of how important this, uh, I guess, medium is because in our normal monthly support meetings, we are able to tap into people across America. Dr. Doris Rapp, and I will be showing you some books in a little while, who wrote the book, Is This Your Child? And Is This Your Child World? She's in Arizona. Well, how is she going to get here? Well, we tap into the phone system, and we tap that into the speaker system up here, and we put her picture on the screen, on the TV, and people get to not only hear Dr. Doris Rapp speak, but they get to ask her questions from here to Arizona. So you really get, and she's world-renowned. She's been on Oprah Winfrey and many other programs. So, uh, you know, e even Donahue when he was uh, still on. So, you know, she was, uh, she's very a very renowned doctor. She's an MD, and she talks specifically about... Uh, you know, how cerebral allergies can cause hyperactivity. So it just gives you an example of the potential of a place like this. So I wanted to thank uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network for providing this uh, facility. And our show um, is here and uh, aired every week from this facility. Uh, and we talk about specifically these issues. And our, it's a half hour show. So if you have access to cable TV in Manhattan, it's channel 17. Uh, excuse me, Channel 56, it's been changed. Uh, Channel 56, uh, every Sunday at 1 p.m. and every Monday at 5 p.m. And these are the issues that we talk about here, and this program will be aired that you saw tonight on uh, Channel 56, and it'll be aired on other places around the country, too. Then we have David Goldson, a 15-year-old track star who does his own show called Youth on the Move and he's been doing it for a good number of years. And I think it's just marvelous what the youths of today are doing. You've been interviewing most of the guys and girls, and I would like to know your name, and what has this program done for you? Um, my name is Nawal Torres from the Bronx, and um, what this program has done for me, basically, it, it took me away from the streets for a little while, you know, got me out of trouble. Um, it gave me the opportunity to stay away from jail, and um, it gave me, it, I haven't been to school in about four years, so it gave me the opportunity to go to school and get my GED and um, make a little bit of money while I'm here. And a little bit of self-discipline, not all that I expected it to be, but a little bit. That's what I've gotten out of the program. And um, that's basically it. Thank you. Yeah. Philip Gonzalez? Yes. What has this program done for you? Well, it, it's made me plan my future, you know. Now I know I, what I could do in the future. It helped me out a lot, you know, self-discipline, a lot of discipline. So, you know, when I get out of here, I already know what to do and stuff like that. Thank you. Good. <laughs> I'm back. And your name is? Davi Molina from Yonkers, New York. And what has this program done for you? Well, um, the program has done a lot for me. Um, it basically just changed my whole life entirely. Um, I came from um, actually Mount Vernon. I used to live in Mount Vernon. While I was up here, I moved to Yonkers. But when I was in Mount Vernon, um, I wasn't having a good life. I was just out on the streets and, you know, just smoking and drinking and, you know, just doing things that teenagers usually do just to, um, just to try to be cool, you know, to try to be down and try to fit in with um, other people. But it wasn't exactly what I expected, you know. Um, I just wanted to change my life because my family wasn't, you know, they, they was just, they didn't want to hear, you know, they wanted, they wanted me to do something for my life. They wanted me to educate myself. And so um, that's when I heard about the challenge program. So I decided that I needed to do something for my life. So that's why I came here to change my whole life and just to, you know, just to further my education and look for a career that, you know, something that I wanted to do. And the challenge, they give you the skills that you need, you know, they help you out. And, you know, you could come here and waste your time, but, um, you know, if you just want to learn, you want to do something, you know, then you just pay total attention to everything they're saying. You know, just, right. just do what you got to do in class. And that's it, you know, you'll have your education ready, you know. When I came here, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what careers I wanted to go to. And now that, I, you know, it's, this program's almost over, I already know what I want to do. And, you know, I want to keep on going with my studies. 
And so, you know, basically, you know, the challenge program is just for, you know, teenagers that are just, you know, for the youth that are looking out for, you know, something to do. They need somewhere to go, some direction in life. And that's what the program does for you. It actually gives you a direction that you could, you know, just further and just um, do something for your life. And, you know, it basically changed my life entirely. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. One of my favorite shows was where I was technical director for Byron's Red Roller. And we had some guests on there that were saying that they were kidnapped by UFOs. And they were playing some musical instruments. And I think you would appreciate what is transpiring here. This is a live call-in show, by the way. Once again, the password is Rosebud. You're watching Byron's Red Roller live, cable access. Give us access, we'll do the rest. All right, what's this one called? This one's called Area 51. Area 51. Actually, you're really not hearing this song because it doesn't exist. Okay, yeah, so it does not exist. This is what white noise sounds like. I mean, you know, I know we're rolling tape, but, you know, let's be real. I was going to do that. I mean, that's like drastic, man, you know? Really? Really? All right. I'm sorry about that, world. Apologize okay. to the satellites. Anyways, when the PSA comes up, we'll get cut, and then we'll get back to the tape. So keep going. Can we start from the top? Yeah. Go up. We can, right? Good, okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, boss. No problem. <laughs> live TV. Really? Well, you know, live tape, audio visual. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go now. Not too far from here. And then we have a show called Mad Dog Live. It is not one of your quiet shows, but it is so creative. It is awesome in some of the stuff that he comes up with. I really think you'll enjoy this part. Hey, guess what? Not John? Entire supply of cocaine has been destroyed. You and Judy get started on the garden right away. And be sure and plant enough marijuana. If we're going to be living in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, we're going to be after getting really fucked up. Hello, this is Alex Quinn 
former executive director of Manhattan. I'm gonna develop a nutsack real b- You've been warned. And then there's my show. It's called The Woman's Connection. It's about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power. We have interviewed women who have been in the Holocaust, breast cancer survivors, especially one who was a Harley Davidson biker, a young lady who was put on to drugs by, at 13 by her mother. Then we got on to some serious fun things where we interviewed a woman in the subway here in New York City who is in her 80s and plays the harp to a woman who has been building harp uh, violins rather for the past 40 years and developed the violin octet to satisfy her need to make things because when she wanted to go to school and become a doctor you didn't do such things at that time and then we give people information about finances we had it so bad because without the men you were really nothing and I remember we had very little to eat, and I was always fighting with everybody for, for a piece of bread, even then. I found out that I had breast cancer. But I'm, I'm here to say that with good friends and family, I was able to pull through it. Yeah, I moved in with Mom, and we started um, using drugs together. She introduced you to drugs? She introduced me to um, smoking pot, drinking, um, food based and cocaine. And that was at 13. I was taken away from her. I learned to do the first viola out of a book and a blueprint and some help from a violin maker in New York. That over 25% of children today in the United States live in poverty. 25%? Over 25%, yes. Thank you for joining us today at the top. Hope to see you again. Bye now. Thank you.